Welcome to Haxby Shed. I've been encouraged by the results of sandblasting and painting the side casing on my scooter engine that I've decided to have a go at the front wheel and you can see the state of it. I've used the front wheel axle and I've packed it out. You can see the long bar sticking out of the front there and that's just to keep all the grit out of the bearings. And I've also taped where the tyre meets the rim just to give the tyre a little bit of protection. So we'll put that in the cabinet and see how we get on. I think I'll have to put the vacuum on. This is straight out of the blasting cabinet. I'm going to need to blow it off and then use some sandpaper to finish it before I paint. I've just rubbed it down and washed it off and so when it dries it'll be ready for painting. The wheel is painted now. I put one coat of hammerite silver on and then I sprayed it with alloy wheel silver spray. So the next thing to do is to fit the disc. Before I took the disc off I made a pop mark on it so that I can get it back on exactly the same way as it came off. These are the three screws that hold the disc on and they, were, they did have a sealer on them so I should put some Loctite on them now before I put them in. Tight but not too tight. They were pretty tight to get them off. All done. Now that's ready to go back on the bike. Now the fiddly bit. Let's see if I can get this together. <coughs> well, predictably, I had to take the caliper off because I couldn't get the disc between the pads, not to line up anyway but it's all good now. With the front wheel done, I'm going to turn my attention to the shock absorber. I got a comment on YouTube after I posted the first video about sandblasting and painting the engine casing. And the person said, so when are you gonna do the wheels and the shock absorber? So I've been shamed into it. I did say on a previous video that I don't clean the bike, but it's not helped by the fact that a cat has been sitting on the seat. Anyway, I need to get the side plastic off and I can do that by lifting the seat and then there's a couple of cross point screws and a couple of Allen screws to take out. Take these handles off first and then we can see a cross point screw here. There's another one here and then there's one underneath on the mudguard. There was another screw just back here and then I managed to unclip the plastic without breaking it. Always a risk on these things. The top nut will be easy to get off. I'm not so sure about the bottom one. It's not been touched for 15 years. We'll see. I'm in luck today. 12mm socket hammered on, held tight and it's out. Well the top bolt came out easily enough as well. So next to wire brush it off I think and see what I've got. It doesn't leak, it's perfectly functional, it just needs smartening up. This unit is riveted together at the bottom here so I can't get the spring off. So. I'll clean it up with a wire brush, best I can, and then I'll paint it black just to smarten it up. I did look at buying a new one of these. Seemed to be a fair bit of work to clean this up and paint it but 
it was 40 to 50 pounds and that seemed too much money to spend to replace a shock absorber that's perfectly functional if not a bit scruffy well scruffy though it is it looks a lot better with the front wheel painted and the shock absorber painted now I won't do the back wheel now because to take the back wheel off I have to take the exhaust off and I'll guarantee if I do that I won't get the exhaust to seal again so I'll wait until the next time the exhaust uh, needs replacing then I'll do the back wheel I hope that was useful to you thank you for watching Hacksby Shed